How about a Christmas quiz? We all love a quiz around this time of year. It distracts us from the anxiety and resentment from that political argument we had at dinner time. And what about an 8-bit computer game quiz? If you've clicked on this thumbnail, there's a fair chance you'll know your stuff. If you know your Monty Moles from your minor willies, you'll stand a fair chance of having fun. Why not give it a go by minimising this quiz video in the top corner of a video response and then proving live that you're clever about Commodore, smart about Spectrums and amazing at questions about Amstrads. Then you can post the video response in the comments with your score and we can see what a big smarty pants you are with your big boy smart trousers and your clever clogs underneath those there trousers. Or you could just post your score and hope that we believe you. I mean we might, unless see a profile thumbnail looks well dodgy. There will be a round on each of the big three 8-bit computers of the time. Sorry to any Oric, BBC or MSX fans out there, we're not going to be doing questions about those machines. Um, and they will be interspersed with other rounds as well. So let's hit it up then, as this intro is taking longer than most 8-bit games took to load. Answers are at the end of each round, so keep a pen and paper at the ready then, as we start with round one. It is about the Amstrad. Question one. What date did the Amstrad CPC 464 come out? Was it A, the 12th of April 1984? Was it B, the 12th of August 1984? Or was it C, the 12th of October 1984? Well, which was it? Question 2. Which of these pieces of software was not in the AMSOFT 12 pack, the compilation that was provided free with some CPC models? A. Animal Vegetable Mineral B. Xanagrams or C. Seesaw Question 3 the longest running Amstrad magazine was Amstrad Action. What was its number one game in their top 100 Amstrad games of all time? Was it A. Spin Dizzy? Was it B. Lemmings? Or was it C. Rick Dangerous 2? That must be a toughie. Question 4. Published by Britannia Software in 1986, which license of a British TV series appeared exclusively on the Amstrad CPC after the Commodore 64 and Spectrum versions were cancelled? Was it A. Dempsey and Makepeace? B. Strike It Lucky? Or C. London's Burning? Question 5. Which of these is not a Roland game? A. Roland in space. B. Roland down the drain. Or C. Roland goes square bashing. And that concludes the Amstrad round. Well, well, well. So here are the answers for the Amstrad round. What date did the Amstrad CPC 464 come out? Well, it was the 12th of April 1984. He's a real spring-like person full of joy, isn't he, Alan Sugar? Uh, question two, which of these pieces of software was not in the Amsoft 12 pack? Well, it was Seesaw. It's very colourful, isn't it? What a nice game. Question three was, uh, what was Amstrad Action's top game in their top 100 list of all time? 
And it was Rick Dangerous. Those guys at Amstrad Action are masochists. That game is horrendously difficult. Question four. Published by Britannia Software, what was the British TV series that appeared exclusively on the Amstrad after the Spectrum and Commodore 64 versions were cancelled? It was Dempsey and Makepeace. Yes, look at them there. Question 5. Which of these is not a Roland game? Well, I've never seen Roland down the drain, have you? So that is the answer. Well... The next round is What's the Alternative? Those who watch my channel will know I cover a lot of TV licensed games on the ZX Spectrum. Alternative software are seemingly responsible for most of them, and most of those range from dull to utterly depressing. Are the following TV licensed games, though, are they published by Alternative, or were they the responsibility of some other clowns in a different software house? Why don't you pick through the next 10 games and say whether they are the work of the unstoppable budget license hoovering juggernaut that are alternative software or if they're somebody else. So, are these games by alternative software? Sooty and Sweep. Popeye. The Secret Diary of Adrian Mole. Bob's Full House. Huxley Pig. Atom Ant. Grange Hill Fireman Sam Double Dare The Monsters Count Duckula Inspector Gadget There you go then, there are the alternative games and the not alternative games. Give yourself a point for each one you've got correct. Yes, and by the way I do know Popeye did come out originally by DK Tronics, who also programmed the game, but it was re-released by Alternative Software, along with its two sequels, including that weird one where you wrestle a Xenomorph, which is the weirdest thing I've ever seen in games, and I can't wait to cover that, but I'll wait for a little while. Let's move on to the Commodore 64 round. What was the number one game in Zap 64? By that time they were called Commodore Force though. In their top 100 games of all time. Was it A. Elite. B. Frankie Goes to Hollywood. Or C. Tarakan 2. Question 2. When was the Commodore 64 discontinued? Was it A. April 1993? Was it B. April 1994? Or was it C. April 1995? Whatever one of those it was, it had a bloody good innings, didn't it? Question 3. What was the subtitle given to the Mindscape Indiana Jones game that came out exclusively on the Commodore 64 in 1985? Was it A. The Fate of Atlantis B. The Lost Kingdom Or C. The Tomb of the Tiger King Question number four Ocean released a Transformers game in the UK in 1986. It wasn't particularly good. 
Neither was the Transformers game, which was released exclusively for the Commodore 64. Which games company released Transformers Battle to Save Earth? Was it A. Activision? Was it B. Americana? Or was it C. Accolade? Question 5. Which famous movie and TV dog went into space in an exclusive Commodore 64 game? Was it A. Lassie? Was it B. Benji? Or was it C. The Littlest Hobo? Where are those Commodore 64 answers? Well, they right here and right now. The number one game in Zap 64 by that time, Commodore Force's top 100 games of all time was Frankie Goes to Hollywood. I've played that recently. The Commodore 64's innings were indeed good and they were indeed extended as far as April 1994. Wow, we. Question 3 was what was the subtitle given to the Mindscape Indiana Jones game that came out exclusively on the Commodore 64 in 1985? It was B, The Lost Kingdom. No, it wasn't Tomb of the Tiger, King Carol Baskin. As a reference that immediately aged about April this year, 2020, I'm talking about. And so no one, if anyone watches this video soon, will know what I'm talking about. Question 4. Ocean did indeed release a Transformers game and also there was another company that released a Transformers game exclusively for the Commodore 64. It was Activision. And there you can see on the screen there is their effort just as subpar as the Ocean one. And the final question from the Commodore 64 round was which was the name of the famous dog that went into space in, in an exclusive Commodore 64 game that was Benji. You should have taken the clue from Benji, Zack and the Alien Prince, maybe, even though it's not connected at all. But there he is in a spaceship. Hmm. Good for him. Bark, bark. In space, no one can hear you. Woof. Now let's test your general knowledge. But guess what? You've got no get outs this time. There are no multiple choice. You either know it or you don't. Crumbs. Question one. Which 1990 flop Orion movie about a troop of elite US soldiers had a game released on all three formats along with the GX4000 and the 16-bit computers, courtesy of Ocean? Question 2. And much to their disgrace, CMVG gave Renegade 3 a high score on all of the 8-bit computers. But can you tell me which of the 8-bit computers had the highest scoring version? Question number three. Who is this? Here he is represented in three separate screenshots from all three versions of the game. Here's a clue. Your uncle is probably like this. Question four. By no means an accurate measure of how many games a system has, but which of the three formats has the most games listed on Wikipedia? I believe they're all commercial games too. But I might be wrong. I'm often wrong about things, as uh, people will know from watching my channel. Question 5. Go on then. How many games does that format have then and I'll, all right i'll be nice i'll give you a multiple choice on this one does it have 1989 games does it have 2300 games or does it have 2022 games listed on wikipedia question number six the GX4000 was a console that had the same hardware architecture as the CPC. It didn't do that well. In fact, it did pretty abysmally. But how many games in total were released for the GX4000 by our friend Mr. Alan Sugar and his company Amstrad? Were there 
and I'm helping you out with another multiple choice, aren't I? Were there A, 32, B, 29, or C, 27 games? Question number seven. What was the very last new commercial games release reviewed in your Sinclair before it departed the news racks in 1992? Was it A... Street Fighter 2 Was it B Double Dragon 3 Or was it C Bully Sporting Darts Number 8 Which sport did Janhegir Khan and Jonah Baddington endorse games of question number nine which software house put out squidge thought to be the worst game of all time was it a the powerhouse b tynesoft or c maxon and the final question of this round is of course question number 10 which weird reason was the Commodore 64 port of Taito arcade game Parasol Stars cancelled? And I got this one from Larry Bundy's book. Is it A. Ocean accidentally released the full game on the B side of Pugsley's Scavenger Hunt, aka Adam's Family 2? Was it B. That the programmer's wife smashed up all the equipment the game data was on in a drunken, jealous rage? Or was it C, Ocean thought that they had the licence for Parasol Stars, but it actually reverted back to Taito that year? So here we are with the general knowledge answers. Um, the flop movie that had a game made about it on quite a few formats, including, I forgot to mention, the Game Boy, was Navy Seals. Do you remember Navy Seals? No. Question number two. What was the highest scoring version in that shameful issue of CMVG um, when they reviewed Renegade 3? Well, the Amstrad version had 83, the Commodore 64 version had 82, and the Spectrum version had 84. So the Spectrum version wins Julian Rignall, one of the most legendary games journalists of all time. What were you thinking, mate? Honestly. Uh, question number three. Who is this? That, my friends, is Mr. Wino. Hmm. Alcoholism. By no means, obviously, an accurate uh, barometer, but according to Wikipedia, what is the machine with the most games out of the big three 8-bit micros? Well, it is the Commodore 64. And how many games did it have for question five? Well, it had 2,000 and 22 that's nearly one for every year of jesus's lifetime the last game reviewed in your sinclair before it folded in 1992 was bullies sporting darts they did review another couple of educational titles based on play days and things the last game they actually the proper game they reviewed was bullies sporting darts which sport did these two fine mustachioed gentlemen represent which had games based upon them? It was squash. Where's my PlayStation 5 squash game? Where's my PlayStation 4 squash game? Where's my PlayStation 3 squash game? Where's my PlayStation 2 squash game? Where are all the squash games? Number 9. Which software house put out Squidge? It was the powerhouse. Well done you lot. And the final question of the round uh, what happened basically to the Commodore 64 port of Parasol Stars? Well, the programmer's wife had a bit of a bad turn and smashed up all of his work and it was non recoverable and they didn't release it. Oops. And lordy, lordy, lordy low. The ZX Spectrum. Question one. What game was top of Crash Magazine's top 100 Spectrum games of all time? Was it A, 3D Death Chase? 
Was it B, Rainbow Islands? Or was it C, Chase HQ? Question number two. How many games that feature Spider-Man came out on the Spectrum? Was it A, zero? Was it B, one? Or was it C, two? Question number three. How many versions of the Spectrum were released after they were bought out by Amstrad? That is, how many versions of the Spectrum were released after they were bought out by Amstrad? That's iterations of the hardware. Sometimes I'm not very clear. Was it A, five? Was it B, three? Or was it C, just the two? Question number four. How much did the Spectrum cost when it was originally released in 1983? Was the 48 k £165? Was it £175? Or was it £185? Well, what a question to ask. And the final question is this from the spectrum round what word is above the number nine key on the 48k spectrum's keyboard what word is above the number nine key on the 48k spectrum keyboard i'm talking about the one with the uh, dead flesh i'm supposed to say i know i criticized people that said that in the last video but there we go is it a delete is it b graphics or is it C, print? Look here, fellas. It's the Spectrum Answers. The number one game in the top 100 games in Crash Magazine was Rainbow Islands. There were two Spider-Man games on the ZX Spectrum. They were Quest Probe Spider-Man and Captain America and Spider-Man in Doctor Doom's Revenge. What a lovely game. It's not. It's terrible. How many versions of the Spectrum did Amstrad put out? It actually put out five, which I was a bit surprised. I thought it was just the plus two, the plus two A and the plus three. But there's a plus two B and a plus... 3B where they fix some audio issues. Well, I never. The cost of the 48K Spectrum when it was initially released was the princely sum of £175. What is the word above the number 9 key on the rubber keyed Spectrum? It is graphics. Well, there we go. That's that solved, isn't it? Final round, fight! Not including compilations, there were 12 Dizzy games released on the 8-bit micros by Codemasters. Can you name as many as possible? Remember there are 12. Do it! Do it! Here are your dizzying answers then. You've got Dizzy, Treasure Island Dizzy, Fast Food Dizzy, Fantasy World Dizzy, Quick Snacks, Magic Land Dizzy, Dizzy Panic, Bubble Dizzy, Spellbound Dizzy, Dizzy Prince of the Oak Folk and Crystal Kingdom Dizzy. What a lovely little egg he is, eh? Look at his boxing gloves.
there you have it a possible 47 points up for grabs sorry about that round number fans how well did you do did you get all 47 your big smart ass or did you get about three uh, i did make it a bit hard didn't i anyway thanks for taking part if this does well enough i might well do one on the 8-bit consoles at easter please post your results and your videos if you so wish in the comments and i'll wish you a merry christmas you filthy animals also maybe do your own quiz that'd be fun wouldn't it okay thanks bye